Hey guys, welcome back to Rage of the Titans. Even though we're like uh, focused on Shadow Saint 4 here, this is just what was on um, as soon as I opened up the app. Basically, it's telling me about the free play mode event where I'm assuming all like um, it's free to play, um, free teacups, you don't need teacups to play, and all the diamond choices are free, which is really cool, really exciting. Um, but I actually have finished Shadow Saint 4 to completion as much as I'm ever going to play it. Um, so yeah, we romanced uh, Michael. Uh, we also romanced Luke for the sake of saving him, dumped him, then romanced Derek. So, and we've gotten the end that I wanted. So I don't have anything else I need to do there. And I don't think this is tied to the, uh, the special event, uh, which is in the category down here. Um, I don't think it's tied to this. Um, but I mean, even if it is, that's not, I hope it's not very long. Um, so I'm not <laughs> concerned about it. Um, so I don't really need to do that. So I'm, I'm waiting for a different story to be, um, to have a free play mode. Um, I think the last time the story was Way Patrol, which I could have used, but <laughs> I was busy. So <laughs> that's fine. That's fine and dandy. It's okay. Uh, I'm not worried about it. But anyway, we're playing Raids of the Titans, uh, today. Um, also I got, um, what do you call it? Why is it Harris? Um, I got, um, well, hold on. It says the stories we often ignore have a great influence on us. Episode eight. Okay. Um, I got, uh, news about the new update that's still working on. It's coming out, um, Jul like in the July Independence Day, well, for America, <laughs> uh, time, July 4th, uh, weekend or whatever, uh, holiday for over here. Um, but, um, so that's exciting. And they also said that they're doing a new special episode for a different story. Um, some people were hoping that it's either like Moonborn or, uh, Cells in the Fog, which would be awesome. Um, uh, if it's Cells in the Fog, then I have work to do. <laughs> cause that was my story to work through on the wiki. I, speaking of which, I need to update that. Cause I, yeah, it's, it's not the same quality as I do now. So I need to go back over that. Plus I'm not... I'm not fully done with that story, but anyway. <sighs> Reminding myself of all the videos I need to make. Oh my gosh. Oh, you know what story I was thinking about playing today? Open Heart from Choices. I really enjoyed that when I was first started it. But anyway, Breeze of Titans. Let me focus. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Chapter 8 A Normal Day. Well, hello there, guy. I didn't expect to see such a cutie here. So you're telling me here you, you just ran into me here was a coincidence and, and you were just here to see Thea. Somehow I don't fully buy it, but may I? He unceremoniously headed directly towards me, making me step aside. May I? Why are you asking me? You know this is not my room. Like, <laughs> and why even ask if he's gonna barge in anyway? Don't pretend like you're polite. He immediately sat down in the chair, crossed his legs, and turned to me. It's. It's the guy Hephaestus left with. I can't let on that I've seen him already. My understanding is that you're the, the curly guy's girlfriend? Um, no. Who gave you that understanding? My understanding that you're his roommate? He smirked, clearly content with the reaction he got out of me. Yep, I'm his new roommate. Mmm. Now why were you banging on the door? Shouldn't you have a key? Sky. He offered me his hand. Shall we reciprocate? Um, I don't know nothing about you. I'm not trying to be overly rude, but you already were rude. So. Smile awkwardly and nodded. Not very tactile, are you? So what's your name? Melody, but you already know that. So what are you doing here, Melody? If you assume that I was his girlfriend, then obviously I'm here to visit Theo. So the question doesn't make sense. Christian caught me by surprise. What do I tell him? He didn't see me back then, did he? What, what do you mean, what do you tell him? <laughs> Your friend is here. And if he did, why is he putting on a show now? He came to see my friend. Is that what they're calling it these days? He once took a, a book from the shelf and threw it at Theo. Surely enough, Theo woke up and stared at us with displeasure. For the first few seconds, he couldn't figure out what was going on, until he finally came to his senses. 
What's going on? Look, Curly. I told you not to invite your girlfriends over. Are you that eager? Get a room. You have some nerve. Ooh, did I hurt someone's feelings? Dill sprang to his feet and came closer to Sky. He didn't even raise his brow, but got up anyway. Why is he provoking Theo? If I don't do something now, they'll fight for sure. Um, well, they're gonna seem like they're gonna fight either way when, when you're not here. I need to stop them right now. If he's not human, Theo might get hurt. Oh. <laughs> Sky turned to me. I'll say it again for the ones in the back. Don't let the door hit you on the way out, doll. And you, roommate. Sky squared his shoulders, his expression turned threatening. Why is he so mad? What's wrong with him? He might have something hidden here if he's living here. We need to come back and investigate. Melody, step away. Theo pushed me back, clearly ready to deliver the first blow. Theo, what do I do? Leave, deal with it, let Theo deal with it. I would just leave, but, um, nah. Okay. Uh, so either we're gonna deal with it or let Theo deal with it. Is that like divinity versus humanity? It doesn't seem like it. If it's not that, let Theo deal with it. It could be divinity versus humanity. And divinity will probably deal with it, yeah? But if it's not, then it could just be... Uh, let Theo deal with it. Could be a relationship boost. And deal with it could be... I don't think it would have no effect because I think the leave one for sure has no effect. Deal with it. Let's see what deal with it does. Uh, I don't feel like dealing with it. <laughs> um, shit, let's just do it. Influence, aha. I put my hand on Thea's shoulder and step between them. Sky seemed to be pleasantly surprised by my decision. Also, the girl has balls of steel, apparently. So what are you going to do to me? The question is, what are you going to do to me? His smile widened. His, he was clearly delighted with the situation. I'm sure your reputation isn't the best. And if I, a straight-A student, will get some slap on the wrist, the headmaster will surely find reasons to give you a more severe punishment. Coming up with rules and punishments. Boring. I was hoping you'd at least slap me. I'm almost disappointed. I, I rolled my eyes and turned to Theo. I should go. See you later. Melody, hold on. I waved his words off and walked into the hallway. It was unusually empty and quiet this morning. I stopped by the window to sort my thoughts out. If Sky is here, where is Hephaestus? What did they do to him? My stomach turned unpleasantly. I pushed my phone and took searching for his number and my contacts frantically. Hope he picks up. To my surprise, he answered almost immediately. Why are you doing this right here, right outside the room? Why don't you go outside and have this conversation? Like, the one who took him is right there. What? Melody, I was just about to call you. Are you okay? Did they... Nah, everything's fine. Don't worry. We chatted for a bit and I left. How are you? The guy, he's here at the dorm. <laughs> yeah, where you are, right outside the damn door. Keep moving, lady. What guy? The one you left with? Oh crap, did he recognize you? I don't think so. Then leave, now. Even if he didn't suspect anything, you should lie low. Spend the day with your friends, go see a movie or something, I don't know. I'll take the matters into my own hands. I understand. And Melody, try to stay out of trouble. I'll, it'll be better for both of us. Do you promise? Uh... No promises, asshole. <laughs> no, he's not an asshole. Um, oh, and thank you. Um, thank you. I saw the comment um, when they told me somebody told me what happened um, if you did the diamond option with him. Well, it was just kind of cutesy. Um, I didn't. Yeah, it was just kind of cutesy. I think it would have been okay, but eh, still, I didn't. I didn't feel like taking it, so I didn't. <laughs> um, can manage on my own. Mm. 
I don't know if one of these are a relationship. But they all have no effect. I don't know. Let's be nice. <laughs> we'll say promise and see what that gets me. Divinity. Interesting. Huh. You said that a bit too surely. Do you want me to say something else? I'll see if I'm in trouble. I'll stay clear of it. Nice, wise decision. Oh, maybe it's like, um, in... Dracula Love Story, where two options are sometimes for one skill choice and one option is for the other. So maybe I can manage on my own and promise for, for divinity and um, can't make any promises was humanity. I'm gonna go with that. I'll call you later. I ended the call and was about to leave when someone called out to me. Melody? I don't expect to see you here so soon. What are you doing here? You didn't expect to see me here so soon. Why did you expect to see me here at all? Did we make plans? I came to see Shane, but he wasn't here. It was late already, so Theo's just to stay with him. I'm glad Theo was there for you. So are you leaving already? Yes, I was thinking. The door flew open and Theo stepped into the corridor. As he saw us, his expression changed. I thought you left already. Sorry about this jerk, I didn't think he'd be here. Hi, Jason. Hurley bird, as usual. Yeah, I was about to go for a walk. What's wrong? I met his new roommate. Sky. Jason got tense. What's the matter? You know him? Not really, just... Stay away from him. Why? I got that already, like, on my own, but I'm gonna need you to give me a little more explanation and then just stay away from him? Like, you can just tell me what to do? <laughs> like, I can make that decision on my own, which I already had made, obviously. But, like, I don't need you thinking you can just tell me what to do. I'm too quite tired of Jason bossing me around. <laughs> Look, it's the weekend anyway. Why don't we go to the mall? Isn't it too early? It'll be open by the time we got out of the gang. What do you think? If my sister asked me to stay out of trouble anyway, and then unwinding with my friends sounds like a nice idea. I think uh, Heather would, sh would be in for sure. So we're going? Let's go there everyone at the campus park and then go. We can accompany you so that you didn't have to wait alone. Or so you can keep an eye on me and stalk me like a weirdo, but okay. Thank you. I'll wait for you outside. <laughs> To be fair, since we just had a scene with, with Theo, I was about to ask, I was I would ask Jason normally here. But he pissed me off with that just stay away from him comment. Like, you freshly put in my mind, reminded me that you're not telling me everything. <laughs> so you know what? I'm gonna ask Theo to wait with me. <laughs> yeah, sure. Just in the he shared a look and Jason nodded and went into his room. We headed outside. What was the look about? The look was either one of the two things, right? Acknowledging that she's more interested in Theo than she is in Jason, or acknowledging that, hey, keep an eye on her, right? Okay, yeah, shared talk. Sorry for that show back in my room. I didn't think you'd be back so early. Never mind. It's not your fault. Still, I'm ashamed for his behavior. Can I make it up to you somehow? I think we'll come up with something. Theo laughed and gave me an awkward hug. I patted his shoulder and pulled away softly. You know, I didn't think everything would be back to normal so quickly after our fight. I can't say everything is fully back. There's still tension between us and quite possibly secrets. But we're working on it. That's right, you guys are very good at playing babysitters. Oh, come on. No, that's what it is. Theo had a to be offended, but he couldn't pretend it for long. You're acting like a baby now. Oh, really? Just an approach, we were roaring with laughter. Your relationship with Theo has improved. Are you ready to roll out? So to sum up, Murphy and Adrian are on their way out. And Heather's still in bed, so she'll join us later. Shall we then? We decide to walk to the mall. Despite it being early morning when we got there, it was bustling with people. We didn't have to wait for Murphy and Adrian for long. As soon as we entered the mall, we saw them coming up from the parking lot. I feel like Adrian's been missing for like several episodes. <laughs> hey, we're here. Um, how did you even think to come here this early? It's a different outfit on him. It's a bit strange. I don't know how I feel about the green plaid. What do you guys think? You think to come here this early? I see you didn't get much sleep. 
That's all right, the cosplay didn't get, get much sleep either. That's scary. He winked at me and turned to the others. I don't know where you want to go now, but I'm tired and hungry. Where were, where were you going to go? I need to go into a couple of the shops. I wouldn't mind having breakfast. Melody, I think you want to get a new issue of your, your comic. I keep answering the question, <laughs> look. The boys ignored this entirely. They thought my hobby was too boring. That's telling. Adrian, will you come with me? Sure, I'll make the sacrifice. Everyone laughed. Murphy gave him a clap on the shoulder, making a mocking, crying gesture. Good luck. We'll go find something to eat in the meantime. Food, here we come. Say goodbye to the guys and head to the bookstore. Okay. <gasps> Look at all the stories! Don't move away from me! Go back! I saw um, Chasing You. I saw a Jackie Love Story. I don't know who all the rest of them were. Oh, I'm trying to see if any of these on the side or anything. I think they might be. I can't get a good look at them. I said hello to the cashier and headed straight to the comic book section. Adrian wandered around me looking at all the shelves of a bit lost. I didn't even know our bookstores had so much foreign literature. What do you mean? Look, it's all in Japanese. He picked up a tome and started flipping through it. Have you seen a manga before? Is that what it's called? I laughed. He looked so innocent in his cluelessness. Adrian smiled awkwardly, blushing. You know, I'm not a fan of these things. Well, if you're not a... If, okay. Here's the thing about that. that. That statement is a little weird. Like, if you're not a fan, then you would have to know what it is enough to know that you're not a fan. You know, you understand what I'm saying? To know you don't like it. Which means you should probably already know that it's called manga, but... Anyway. <laughs> that was just a weird statement. I think some of the, some of the statements in here are like a, just a little strange. Um, they don't make a lot of sense, but that's okay. Um, but you're, you're over here. Go nuts. Sure. I should pick something up. Um, I should pick up something for, from it for Hef Marshall. I smirked and turned to stand with a comic book. The one I needed was up on the top shelf. What do I do? Get it myself, ask Adrian for help, ask the worker for help. What's that Adrian? Excuse me, could you? Sure, which one? That one on the top shelf? He approached me and put his hand on my waist softly and reached up. <laughs> In a second, he had gotten it down and was holding the covet coveted issue. I reached forward, but Adrian smiled, holding his hand to the side. What about the magic word? Uh, please? Adrian laughed and gave me the issue. And she gave me an expecting look. I need to pick something up for Marshall as well. Fine. Okay, let's get a look. Okay. I don't recognize everything. Only certain things are from the stories. This one says Valkyrie. So that could be like Path of, path of the Valkyrie. I'm trying to see if any of the other ones make any sense. Hmm. Not quite. He waited patiently as I examined the shelves, but I guess it was hard for him to wait, because in a, in a minute he approached me from behind and looked over my shoulder. Yeah, that was the second season of Dracula there. Do you want help? You know, uh, sure. He hugged my waist and lowered his chin on my shoulder. Maybe something like this? Huh? He moved closer, getting some children's story from the shelf. I laughed quietly. That's a miss for sure. Did you pick it for the illustration? Sure. Look how pretty the cover girl is. She looks like you. She doesn't. I turned around, grazing his cheek with my lips in the process, and I immediately felt awkward about it. Oh, I'm sorry. It's alright. Nothing to be sorry about. He pressed his forehead against my temple and murmured something. I gently brushed up against his hair, sliding deeper into uncomfortable silence. You know what? I think I like this one. He took some action-packed tone from the shelf and gave it to me. It was an unmistakable choice. I think you're right. We're done here. Adrian let me go and we headed to the checkout. While I was paying for the purchases, Adrian got a call. He listened attentively and then turned to me. I'm gonna leave you for a couple minutes, okay? Yeah, because that happens all the time. I've got some business to attend to. Yep, some business. He left the shop and I turned back to the cashier. When I finally got the bag with the comics, I headed outside. 
Adrian wasn't anywhere to be seen, but I spotted another familiar face nearby. Ramona was standing with her friends engaged in a lively conversation. As she noticed me, she said something to them and headed towards me. Hey, I didn't expect to see you here. Uh, well, I mean, obviously, we, we didn't plan to meet here or anything, but it's not weird that I'm here. No, did I. Did you want to talk about something? Yes, it's about Shane. He left me a voice message, told me I was in danger. And mentioned Tom as well. What did he say exactly? I've deleted the message, but he said something along the lines of, It's a curse, I'm certain. You should skip town while you still can. Soon, they'll come for you. Sounds frightening. Don't trust anyone. If you need help, ask Tom's sister. She knows what to do. You know, you know, another thing I'm mad about, we haven't got a chance to read that journal yet, and I'm... Why am I betting that it's probably already missing? I could go hysterically. She knows what to do. We're playing. He gave me the diary and left. I should read it as soon as I get home. <laughs> should have been read that. <laughs> that diary was the biggest amount of information we got about Tom to, to date. And then Marshall just pops up. Um, and he's like, oh, come with me instead. Um you know, to learn about some kind of obscure something, something, another. At the time, we didn't even know it was related to Tom at all. And he still didn't really give us any answers about Tom, per se. We could have gotten the most answers from the journal, but she put that on the back burner, despite that being the biggest hint so we got to answers this entire time. And it's a little bit frustrating. I think, um, Jamar, you mentioned that, um, uh, that you think you're more invested <laughs> Like someone was commenting, they said that they were more invested in the mystery than it seemed like all the characters were, in our, and including our, our MC. And I feel like the same way. It's like, can you focus, please? <laughs> Do you know anything about it? Should I tell her the truth? Or was the information be dangerous for her as well? Marshall Hephaestus warned me it was risky. This time my phone lit up with a new message. I wasn't going to tell her nothing. Because I had to like pull, like pull, like pull in teeth. I had to pull information out of her. I basically had to threaten her <laughs> to get information out of her. It's finally forthcoming now. Um, yeah, I didn't like, there's no point in her knowing. Like, because she's not going to do nothing about it. Hello, text to me. Um, hmm. By the same token, she should probably know she can protect herself. I don't know. Hello texted me she met up with the gang downstairs and that they were heading to get me at the bookstore. I pocketed my phone and turned to Ramona. Look. Shane told you the truth or Shane's been off his trolley. Wait. Oh no, no, I don't want to say that because that makes it sound like she shouldn't take this threat seriously. And she absolutely should. Even if it seemed he was too canned short of a six pack. <laughs> Melody, he most certainly is. Must to mean crap like this? Look, you're in danger, for real. Even if I can't tell her about the gods, you still should be careful. Thank you. Think about it. Tom has gone missing. Shane ran away. All three of you were writing this research. But it's stupid. Who could possibly need some college papers? That doesn't change the facts. Please treat it seriously, okay? If you see something strange or feel like something is off, call me right away, okay? So if someone breaks into my room is supposed to call you, not the police? Don't be stupid. Don't twist my words, okay? Who being a stupid idiot? Look, hey, I'm trying to give you prepared. What people won't do for me, I'm trying to do for you. <laughs> so how about you get your shit together? See, check out my nerves. All right, I got you. Here I am. Hey, I'm gonna look good. Hello to you too. She fixed her glasses. It was difficult to ignore how tense she got when Heather arrived. Kind of reminds me of the girls from the bathroom at the club. As soon as Heather got in there, they just kind of like bounce like immediately. <clears throat> I wonder why Ramona dislikes Heather and other girls for that matter. Did something happen between them? Are you done here? This is ice cream truck. Yeah, I think we're done. Melody, I'll call you if anything happens. Thank you so much. Turned around and headed to her friends. Heather said something under her breath and then looked at me beaming with joy. Let's go, there's a truck outside. Adrian will be back in a minute. I can't. I'm sure you can wait for a few minutes. Yeah, so can we. Let's go. 
It was hard to fight her enthusiasm. It's really not. So a minute later, we were back outside the mall entrance. There was a line to the truck and we had to wait. How did you manage to lure Adrian into a bookstore? I didn't have to lure him into that like an actual friend. He just came just to be with me. You know, like none of the rest of you did, but you know, whatever. No idea. Actually, he just did it. I was surprised. Good job. Maybe he remembers how much he enjoys reading. The line grew shorter and soon it was our turn. <clears throat> what can I get for you? May I get- no. I like some- I listed by the display on short cheese. I came close to make up my mind and not irritate people behind us. Which one would you like? I always recommend these flavors. Pistachio. Chocolate. Or fruity. Fruity, please. Thanks. Great choice. Which one would you like, young lady? After long, hard thinking, Heather finally settled on strawberry. While well, we stepped aside and settled down on a nearby bench to enjoy our ice cream quietly. <clears throat> it's so nice outside today. I don't even feel like leaving. Why don't we sit outside for a while? Um, now let's go back. I'm sure the guys have lost us already. And you know how capricious they get sometimes. Fine, fine. Heather finished her ice cream, squinted with pleasure, um, and looked back, looked at me. I'm ready. I left a smudge of ice cream from her face with the napkin. We returned to the mall. <clears throat> nah, you dragged me outside. <laughs> Unwillingly, we're supposed to be hanging out together. I have no idea where they are. But you were here together. I went away for like uh, 15 minutes and they were already they were gone already. What's going on here? We've lost two of our party. Are you out of your mind? They'll find trouble in no time. Well, the trouble will find them. Where might they be? I think they're... Oh, uh, they went to get food, right? Food, 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 food. They said that Murphy said he was hungry. I think Theo asked about breakfast. <laughs> one of the options of the bookstore, they wouldn't have been there because we were just there. And they didn't say anything about a movie. I remember specifically, um, Murphy said he was tired and hungry, and I think Theo mentioned breakfast. We walked over to the cafe, but to our surprise, there were no visitors there. Only an irritated hostess. What are the felonies two have already screwed up something up? Because it's not just a feeling. I just the hostess. Excuse me, have you seen two guys here? That's Ollie Vague, Murphy and Theo. Are they your friends? Her turn made me worry. Uh, nope. Follow me. Hostess led us to the kitchen. Here they are. Oh, good influence. I got it right. The scene in front of us, made, our eyes almost made us double over with laughter. Soaking Theo and Murphy were wearing aprons standing in the middle of the kitchen. Surrounded by dirty dishes. It's all your fault. What the fuck? Mine? I didn't start the fight. No, but you always like to finish it, don't you? What did you expect? Not only are we penniless now, we were also doing stupid dishes. Why did I even go with you? At least we've gotten off cheaply. Those idiots just paid for the damage and left. How's that fair? Murphy, this apron becomes you. He turned to my voice and blushed fiercely. I didn't know it was so easy to embarrass you. Hitting me with my own weapon, princess? I like it. What trouble did you find this time? Don't even ask. I sat at the door watching these two. I think if it's hinted they weren't enjoying this at all. Sure, I've seen a lot. This is something new. I think we could use such a cute man at our dorm. Heather giggled quietly, leaning against Jason. Murphy pushed Theo with his shoulder and Theo took a step back. He immediately threw foam at Murphy. The guy started, started a pretend fight. I think we should wait outside. This kid seems to de-stress. Won't we at least try to help them? Nah, I said doing, let them deal with it. Besides, they do look good in aprons. Adrian rolled his eyes completely unfazed by the scene. We stepped back into the cafe. As we occupied the booth, we started chatting. Are you going to the museum thing? The one Miss Black set up for us? <clears throat> As if we could say no. Right? She's supposed me to be there at all costs. Why does she care about some ancient Greek tour anyway? Um, she's a Greek mythology teacher? <laughs> what? My friends kept talking and I got a pretty strange idea. <clears throat> you just try and do the thing Hephaestus taught me. What did he say? Focusing on the object? Oh, do it! Oh, I have just enough! Oh, you wouldn't be able to do it if you were a human! 
So what can you do with your humanity points? <clears throat> I wonder. I have just enough. Oh my gosh. Ha ha. That's the game. Walked out of the cafe. No, no, no. You should have focused on the game. I bet they look strange. Luckily, no one followed me. Come on, you can do it. Eyes. Let's play babysitter with her and not leave her alone all this time. And suddenly, they're not following her in nowhere. That's that's all as well. Eyes wandered around displays and passed her by. It was hard to focus on one thing, but at some point, reality started listening like mother of pearl. No way. Could something really be here? I closed my eyes for a second and opened them again, ready to see anything. It seemed like nothing had changed particularly, but some movement attracted my attention. Center of the mall, there was a fountain with the sculpture of a breathtakingly beautiful young woman. It's just me, or... The sculpture turned her, head, uh, turned her head to me, winked at me, and smiled. I smiled back and the sculpture laughed. I wonder if I can come closer without scaring her. She seemed so alive. The moment I thought about it, I passed by and pushed me with his shoulder. The girl turned to stone again. It would have been fine if I didn't realize I was seeing very unusual creatures among the crowd. Someone only had one eye, another was covered in fur. Are those hooves? But one looked at me suspiciously, but before uh, they realized I could see them, I headed back. Oh my god, look at that guy's hair! I was running to the cafe and found my friend still in the booth. They were still talking about the museum tour. Can't go to the museum wearing something like this? I should come up with something more fitting. What's bad about your outfit? You don't get it. I need to fit in. I need to buy some clothes. By the way, I never got a chance to go to the stores. Adrian looked at me and when I saw it next to him. Why are you looking so tired? Were you running just now? No, it's just there. I'll leave her alone. Melanie, let's go shopping and take your mind off what's ever in there. There was no point trying to refuse. Why does she always say that whenever Heather mentions something? And then she just agrees to it. Like... I can't decide if this is like some sort of persuasion power that Heather has, which kind of seems like it, or um, if it's just like a, a weird character trait or something like that. Like to say that Heather is really pushy, which she is. But I'm wondering if they're trying to hammer home something else here, hint at something more mysterious going on with this. So I feel like a lot that she has persuasion powers. <clears throat> you go. I'll wait for these dummies here. We agreed to meet by the excellent half an hour. They said Heather and I walked over to the nearest clothes store. In a few moments, Heather shoot me into the dressing room, carrying some outfits over. Bright star. Moonlight. Cloudy fairy tale. These are some odd things, okay. I'm gonna go with this one now. Ding, I can't reach the zipper. I clearly need help here. I'll tell her off, Jason, I'll do it myself. <laughs> I wanna do it myself. Uh, okay, fine, 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 fine. Let's get closer to one of our friends, fine. I've been chefed and Heather for a while. I, pro I could probably ask her. I'm still mad at Jason, but I'm still mad at Heather, too. Okay, how about this? I'm more recently mad at Heather. So, we'll go back to Jason. <laughs> Jason, are you here? I heard a muffled uh-huh from the other side of the curtain. Could you help me? I can't zip it. I can call Heather if you want to. It's okay, there's nothing to it. Just help me zip it. Alright, then I'm going in. Jason came in with his eyes closed. Only when I reassured him everything was fine, he opened them and smiled meekly. You're incredible. It's like Jason and, <laughs> and it was out there. <laughs> he came closer and caught the zipper slider, removing my hair to the side delicately. He pulled it up slowly, fixing it in place. He moved my hair back softly and took a step back. Anything else? No, thank you so much. He smiled awkwardly and stepped out, leaving me alone. Uh, now I should fix my hair and I'm done here. Oh, I like my hair. Ugh. Huh. It's... it's different. Green Dawn. I 
I don't like this. I don't, I don't like the the end cut. I don't know. I like the other hair, previous hair before that. But this, the curls are all luscious, like two tone hair. It's, it's interestingly colored. There's like a random strip of blonde here, then blonde right here in this section, but this part is red. It's very, very interesting. I can go with it. I can work with it for a little bit. Sure. I know you, lady. You're a mythical being. <laughs> we, uh, we met everyone at the end, just like we agreed. I see you've changed. Has y'all my clothes are smelling like this show. He looks pretty cool. What does the 70 mean? Oh. It becomes you. Alright, I think we've had enough venture for today. Let's go home, maybe? Everyone agree unanimously. We're heading toward the exit when we saw some um, people approaching us. No time to react as Adrian and Murphy should a look and Murphy pushed me towards the exit. I'll catch you later. I'll give you a ride. I can get home myself. It's fine. Go with him. It'll be faster and safer. Safer? Murphy smiled guiltily and turned me around and pushed, pushed towards the parking lot entrance. We approached this parked motorcycle. A girl appeared from behind a pillar. I was wondering when you showed up. It's her. Murphy took a step back, covering me with his body. Murphy, baby. I was missing you already. Baby? Why is she calling him that? This person changed and immediately became scarily serious. Haven't you missed me? Sybil? Long time no see. Who's this adorable creature? She reached for me, but Murphy grabbed her hand. The fuck? Why are you trying to touch me? Sybil laughed. Look at you, so possessive. Come on, baby, you should share your toys. She's not a toy. Be a good boy and let my hand go. Or else. Murphy hesitated, but did as she said. That's better. And still, who are you? Um, the way not the way to get to know me is not touching me, though. I can't let her know let her know that I know her. Before I opened my mouth to answer, Murphy spoke up. What do you want? I wanted to say hi and check if everything was going according to the plan. What plan? Were we involved in it as well? What are you talking about? Oh, she, so she can speak. Interesting. It's alright. So she doesn't know anything? Don't know about what? What a pity. Poor girl has no idea who she hangs with. Shut up before I... Before you what? Bite me dead? Hush, boy, you shouldn't show your fangs to someone your life depends on. If if I didn't think he was Cerberus before, <laughs> I certainly do now. <laughs> your life depends on. Murphy, what is she talking about? Murphy didn't answer, he just gave me the helmet. His eyes seem unnaturally yellow under the parking lot lights. Get on the motorcycle, we're leaving. But, no but Melody, get on the damn motorcycle. First of all, don't talk to me like that. That's number one. But number two, I can't trust her, she's probably dangerous, so we're gonna get on this bike. I'm just saying. But <laughs> don't talk to me like that. And that, that already secured, I had already decided not to date Murphy before. <laughs> but like, people talking to me like that, like talking over my head, that, that just, Cinches it. That just, just cinches it. <laughs> I approached the most second and put my helmet on, waiting for Murphy. He didn't move. So she's, she trusts you so much she didn't, doesn't ask for explanations. Fascinating. Murphy was ready to answer her, but we got distracted by the sound of footsteps approaching. Sybil? Here's our prince. Sybil turned to him and licked her lips. Murphy, get her out of here. I got this. So much fuss around one girl. Is she that special? Um, didn't you know that? Because you're going out of your way to make sure that they're not telling me anything. Like, 
that don't make no sense. <laughs> you already know that. Why are you being stupid? Murphy headed towards me without saying a word. I looked at Adrian, he was perfectly calm. Please be careful. I hate it. Still silent, Murphy sat in front of me and we rode off the parking lot. I think I got it. Most like I got out and onto the highway. For a while, everything was calm, but then I noticed another motorcycle catching up with us. Murphy swore in his breath that hugged him firmer to notice how tense he got. What's the matter? It's not a problem. Don't worry. Ooh, I'll that one too. The other motorcycle kept gaining on us. We couldn't get away, and the nearest turn was a mile away. Hold on tight, princess. We're gonna have to speed up a little. Um. It, it was okay. No doubt, the little choices were still weird, but I mean, I wasn't mad at the episode, so. I'll give it a four. Okay. So we had just enough divinity to get, um, despite uh, randomly having two humanity choices, we like just had enough. Did we accidentally, I think we got humanity once with a choice that was divinity and humanity. And I think I accidentally chose a humanity choice somewhere along the way. But thankfully I didn't do more than that because I had exactly enough. So that was interesting. Um, we also got some influence. I still think the other option would have been um, improvement for a relationship with Theo. I don't know. I wonder, like, do you need your friends? To I'm just trying to keep them, like, as friendly as possible, so... I don't mind choosing friendly options for my friends, I suppose. Uh, along the way, so, I mean, that's fine. I guess, I don't know. But anyway, I don't know. I got more work to do, so <laughs> I'm going to end this part right here. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, go ahead and show the like button, some love. Subscribe to see more content like this, and I will see you next time. Bye!